Did you know that there's fragrances out there that smell like narcotics? Believe it or not, from an artistic perspective, it might make sense to make something a little bit different, a little bit daring, slightly outrageous. You gotta really tote the line between creativity and kind of demented. I mean, Andy Warhol back in the day, in the Studio 54 days, everything was inspired by some drug element. Whether it be the massive lines of the devil's dandruff on glass countertops, or simply placing a small tab under the tongue that reminds you of a Listerine strip back in the day to cool your breath. How many times do you puff on a little something to open up your mind, and get you clear, and bring you back to a really common state? Because your significant other's driving you crazy. Well, I've compiled the list of five fragrances that give me narcotic type elements, a little bit of drug influence. Now, this is not promoting the use of narcotics by any means. I am clean and sober 16 and a half days. But if we're adding a little art element to perfumery, why not add a little narcotic? Let's roll my music so I can put you on to five fragrances that have this druggy type element. Bless you, morning, my beautiful peoples. You know who it is. It's your boy, C to the U to the B to the A. And the new year, the new drug. I mean, the new fun. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, I'm going to name one honorable mention, which I don't have a full bottle of, but I will be getting in 2024 because not only did the name ring a bell, but the scent itself was kind of like, oh, they really put some uh, in depth research into making this fragrance. And that's Front Boucle's. Okay. Speaking from, not experience, but from research, it smelled identical like the cut used to, you know, before fentanyl was introduced, it was killing everybody and just fucking up good times. Front Boucle cocaine was a very powdery, musk forward, orris root, dusty Johnson and Johnson, kind of producing this uh, level my soul kind of thing. Google it. But that honorable mention is Cocaine by Franck Boucle, which is a very artistic, actually good fragrance though. It's very funky, very party vibes, very glass counter, very 1980s. Very, I missed my childhood, next one. So this next fragrance happens to be one of the most addictive drugs that 98% of the dudes watching my channel absolutely use and abuse. Oh, tight, 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 yeah. I'm so confident that every dude that watches my channel abuses this joint because this is the most powerful drug, the most addictive drug, the best drug. And that's vulva. Cause Punangus is addictive. Punangus will make you do things you don't wanna do. Punangus will make you cry in ways you've never cried. You ball up in a fetal position, knees up to the chest and go, I don't wanna live anymore. Only Punangus will make you do that. So when you have a fragrance like Vulva, which is completely and utterly surrounded by international Nangus, then you know, she's yours now. The marketing material behind Vulva is by far one of the wildest and craziest scents out there. There is no artistic liberties here. This is possibly illegal in some states. I'm gonna be honest with you, the consistency of the liquid in here and the material might not even be shown, but the viscosity of this vaginal scent is next level crazy. For those who have it, I can't show this on can I, I definitely can't. You must get the fragrance to get to see what I'm talking about. Whip it out, whip it out. Yeah, yeah. But to give you an idea, look at the thickness of the vulva liquid. That's not fragrance. That is actual puss puss juice. What is that? What is that? So if you're gonna tell me that vulva isn't wildly addictive and damn near narcotic levels, you're bugging. Next one. Now the next fragrance inspired by a narcotic isn't even illegal nowadays. And we're talking about Cannabis Intense by Fragrance Dubois. I love cannabis notes. Something about that greenery definitely brings me into this calming state. There's something very sexy, herbal, green, a little danky about these scents that really pop off my skin and really do come off sexy in my personal taste. Some skunky weed fragrances like uh, Black Afghano by Nasamato is something that's disgusting. It smells like cheap dirt weed, but this joint is beautiful with elements of citrus, saffron, nutmeg, oud, cedar, sex appeal, deep, rich, ultra luxurious, and slightly sweet with a bit of a spice. A fun fragrance that I would actually say is going to be today's scent of the day, because if I can't smoke it, I'm gonna wear it. 
Cannabis intense, demand stink a wee, you know. Next one. You ever been captivated by the allure of absinthe? The fact that you drink this little green cocktail with a sugar cube that you have to melt on top and you're potentially gonna be tripping for days to see the green fairy and just go into this wild hallucinogenic state? Well, Amarud Santal Des Indes has that absinthe element to it, but also has this beautiful woody concretish type element, this dryness, there's a little bit of cementish type element that is ultra sexy. Sweet incense and boozy leather is what's contained in this fragrance. But for me, I also get this dusty elements, this concrete industrial type vibe, this ultra masculine, artistic yet intriguing scent profile that nobody ever speaks about. Amarud has some real fire gems in their lineup, but without the proper marketing or brand exposure through any other content creators, people really will miss out on such a beautiful lineup. Anybody who's familiar with this house knows the type of quality that these people get into, but if you want a little absinthe concrete dustiness that's wildly sexy, Amrud has it in Santal di Indes. Next one. Now this next fragrance smells like cigarettes and bad decision. This is definitely you had a full blown argument with your wife. You got kicked out, went to the local pub, had a bunch of shots of Jameson, a few rum and cokes, smoked a bunch of cigarettes, and definitely mingled with other dudes at the bar and they shared a couple of narcotics with you because Acro Malt? Smells like a drunken mistake at the middle of the night. You did all the drugs. It's a cornucopia of mistakes. This is a ultra peaty, multi boozy, dusty, weedy, coke induced mistake of a fragrance. This is a new acquisition in my collection and I'm having like third or fourth doubts of why I bought it. It's very strong, it's very unique. Super unusual, very much on that artistic space, which confuses the shit out of me. The person who buys this fragrance is a true alcoholic, must go to meetings, or prides himself sitting in a woody atmosphere that's just full of mold and mistake. Very strong, very unusual. I was hoping for it to be a little bit more whiskey centric, but this is on the ultra peaty, malt, earthy, dank. It's, it's rough, it's rough, it's rough. Rough! This fragrance almost smells like the after ash of a barbecue smoke pit. That's kind of what it smells like. But that barbecue smoke pit happens to be like in a crack den. Not that I've ever been or ever done anything like that, but I'm just hypothetically speaking. What do you think I grew up, Greenwich, Connecticut? So Acro definitely has this boozy, alcoholic, narcotic concoction in one bottle. Proceed with ultra caution and sample way before ever thinking of blind buying this joint because you might feel like I did. Next one. And I'm gonna give you guys five seconds to guess what this particular fragrance smells like. Go. Five minutes later. Yes. The brand is 1G and this one is called Cocaine, only this is the Wolf of Wall Street edition. Now if you guys haven't seen my video previously of this entire cocaine lineup, it's from a brand called 1G. Now 1G sent me a couple of their fragrances and I have explored them all. They all have gotten a bit of wear each, but one of the craziest uh, suspect packaging I've ever encountered. And when you say, Kuba, why is it so suspect? Well, if you didn't see that video, let me give you a quick recap of the type of packaging that you can get from 1G. Now this one in particular didn't come with it because this is their VIP, ultra luxurious, wildly aggressively priced luxury pack. This is for the Wall Street broker who really parties hard because this is their Lux pack. Why is there so much white dust all over this? This is the Lux pack that comes with some of these fragrances. Now, now this is the Lux Pack that's associated with some of these fragrances. Now, what's in that Lux Pack, Kuba? It looks like a cigar humidor. Some, some, uh, once you open this puppy up, you got, oh sh what's... No, no, we're golden, we're golden. Okay, sorry, just thought something crazy was in there. So it comes with um, gloves, soft, uh, really silky gloves, yeah. Uh, it comes with a handkerchief, just in case you have to dab off anything. Uh, it comes with a spoon in case in the middle of the process you decide to have like a cup of tea and it didn't have any sugar in it. We'll do that. Put this to the side. Oh, there's two layers just in case you didn't know that. Mm -hmm. uh, they have their business card laminated in a very particular type of way. It's a heavy duty business card. I think they're trying to mimic like the Amex Platinum. 
because it's a metal card, uh, 1G, with a shiny, very sharp edge over here, just to promote their business, and in case you wanna share it with a friend, there's a couple of them there, so it comes with that. Getting the hint yet? Yeah, you did. So followed by other pro, I don't know why they look used in here, but it's crazy. So in case this is a party pack, so if you wanted to have a party and just share the experience with a bunch of friends, you can just pass these little mirrors around, uh, portable mirrors that you can um, just look at yourself, check your makeup, your lip gloss, whatever. Um, yeah, comes with that. Um, in case, let's say one of y'all gets sick, right? Comes with a couple of these joints, uh, 1G stamped items here. And just in case you get sick and it's hard for you to swallow a pill, it happens to me all the time, you get one of these joints, you open it up with this little, and you put the pill in there and you crush it. So maybe you can put it in your orange juice so like that you can just swallow that pill easily when you get sick or you have a headache or a hangover. It happens to people have tight esophagus, I understand. And in order for you to drink that orange juice, they provided a rose gold plated straw. It's a small straw because you don't have to drink a lot of orange juice to take that crushed pill. You just take this rose gold straw and just, you know, just sip the juice right away. And while all of your friends are using those mirrors, you have a little cute countertop table that's, I don't know why this has fingerprints on, it's insane. So a little count, you know, you put it on the table and then you can, you know, crush the pill in case you don't want to use that other device. And in case you're a diabetic and you have to carry your pills on the go, but those big plastic boxes are very cumbersome, you get one of these cards, right? You just slide it open and then you can put one pill here, another pill there, you have your carry-on straw there in case you lose the other one. You always wanna keep one in your pocket to take your medication. Boom, take that there, you can put the straw there if you crush your pills and then you know, use it as such, use it as a credit card and then put it right in your stash. If they think of everything. So yes, back to the cocaine fragrance. What does it smell like? Fun. No? So these are five fragrances that have a narcotic type element to them. Now, did you ever think that you would want to purchase a fragrance that has narcotic style elements? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see y'all stitches next time. You know who it is. Uh, I got a cold. Uh, biggest in the game. <clears throat> <clears throat> Smooches.